Aircraft stability is one of the most important things you need to learn if you want to improve your flying abilities as a pilot. But for some reason, a lot of instructors will tell you that you can just throw it out the window once you pass a written test. But that's not true whatsoever. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, I'm Josh, and today I'm talking to you about aircraft stability and what makes an airplane stable, because this is a really important building block for learning how to fly an airplane. But what the heck is stability? Well, stability is the ability of an aircraft to correct for disturbances in its equilibrium and return itself to its original flight path. Now, I know that this is a $10 definition, so for those of you who are kind of stupid like me, let me give you an example. Let's say I'm flying this little airplane right here, and all of a sudden my nose gets pushed up by turbulence. If I'm flying a stable airplane, the airplane is going to want to pitch back down to its original flight path. I'll explain why that is in a minute, but it's important to remember that most training airplanes like Cessna 172s or Piper Cherokees are designed to be super stable. And that's because a stable airplane is easier to control. Keep in mind, some airplanes are designed to be less stable on purpose. Take a look at this fighter jet. Fighter aircraft like this are designed to be less stable so they can be more maneuverable. They can turn super sharp and they have the ability to change their direction at the drop of a hat. But aircraft like this that are less stable are a lot harder to control. Remember that a stable aircraft is easier to control. Now when we're discussing aircraft stability, it's important to remember that all three axes are considered when an aircraft is designed. Hopefully you remember the three axes we talked about in the last lesson, because we're going to be building on that discussion today. If you don't, here's a quick reminder. First, we've got the lateral axis, which runs laterally across the aircraft. Then we have the longitudinal axis, which runs the length of the aircraft. And then we have the vertical axis, which runs the height of the aircraft. And once again, these axes go through the aircraft's center of gravity. Now, when we're talking about stability, it's important to know that there are two different kinds of stability that affect these axes, static stability and dynamic stability. Static stability is the initial tendency of the aircraft after the equilibrium has been disturbed. In other words, what is your airplane's immediate reaction after you make a control input or you get pushed around by the wind or something and your airplane moves around one of the three axes? For example, let's say you're flying along and you pitch the nose of your airplane up to five degrees nose high. You use the elevator to move the airplane up around its lateral axis. What is the airplane's initial tendency? Well, if the airplane's initial tendency is to pitch back down, that means your aircraft has positive static stability. On the other hand, if your airplane's initial tendency is to continue straight ahead at that same five degree attitude, we would say that this aircraft has a neutral static stability. This simply means that whatever control inputs you make, the airplane stays right where you put it. Or if turbulence rolls your wing into a five degree bank, that wing is gonna stay right where it's at. But an airplane could also be designed with a negative static stability. Most of you guys are never gonna fly an airplane like this, but if an aircraft has negative static stability, it is gonna keep moving whichever direction the control input was made. For example, let's say I yawed my airplane to the right with my right rudder pedal. An airplane with negative static stability would have an initial tendency of continuing that yaw to the right, and then you'd be in a flat spin to the right. But once again, your training airplane is designed to have positive static stability. So this isn't really gonna be a thing for you, but take a look at this F-14 Tomcat in a flat spin that's experiencing this exact thing. Fighter aircraft are designed to have negative static stability so they can do crazy stuff in combat. Boy, that looks difficult to control, doesn't it? I'll take my stable airplane any day. Okay, so static stability is an airplane's initial tendency once the equilibrium has been disturbed. But now I wanna to talk to you about dynamic stability. But before I do that, I wanna ask you a question. Are you trying to get your private pilot certificate? If so, did you know that you need an endorsement from an instructor before you can take the written exam? That's because the FAA's private pilot written exam is really difficult, and the FAA wants to make sure that you're ready. Now this series here on YouTube is completely free, but if you need that endorsement, probably one of the cheapest ways to get that is with my premium ground course on freepilottraining.net. That course includes these videos, reading assignments, quizzes, practice tests, and the endorsement once you're ready. And all that is only $50 compared to most ground courses, which are usually around $300. So if you're enjoying these videos, please consider checking that out after this video. Okay, let's go back to talking about dynamic stability. In a nutshell, dynamic stability is an airplane's response to a change in the equilibrium over time. Remember, if an airplane has positive static stability, its initial tendency will be to go back towards its original position. But what happens after that is what determines our dynamic stability. 
Let's say we pitch the nose of the airplane up. We know that our training airplane has a positive static stability, so the nose is going to pitch right back down. But the nose doesn't pitch down exactly where it was. Training airplanes are designed so that the nose moves down below its original position, but at a slightly shallower pitch attitude. And guess what? Once again, our airplane is stable, so it's designed to pitch back up, and then down again, and then up, and so on. Now, if an airplane has positive dynamic stability, these oscillations are going to get smaller and smaller until they're completely unnoticeable. This is a good thing for training airplanes. Positive dynamic stability makes it super easy to get the airplane under control because we can use really small control inputs. And if we go too far, the airplane will eventually correct itself back to where it needs to be. And that's why this lesson is so important. New pilots don't typically have a good understanding of dynamic stability. And because of that, they tend to over control the airplane. Now we'll talk more about this in a minute, but first let's talk about the two other types of dynamic stability that some airplanes have. Let's say we pitch the nose up again, but this time it went back to the same position down below, and then it pitched back up to the same position, and those oscillations never got smaller. This is what we call neutral dynamic stability, and this isn't really something you want because anytime you did anything with the controls, the airplane is just going to oscillate the entire time after you made a control input. Another type of stability is called negative dynamic stability. This is what we call it if we made a control input and those oscillations just got further and further apart instead of getting smaller and smaller. Once again, this would not be desirable either because any tiny little bump or anything would make you go completely haywire within a few oscillations. So we want the airplane to come back to its original position. That's going to make it easier to control the aircraft. Now you're probably still scratching your head over all this, and that's because this training requires you to understand two different topics at the same time. So we have a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. But once I explain some of the design features of your training aircraft and how they improve the stability of your airplane, this is all going to make way more sense. Keep in mind, to fully understand this, we've got to talk about how stability relates to the three axes of our aircraft. Now, this part can be a little bit confusing, so take your time here and rewatch this segment if you need to. First, let's talk about how we get longitudinal stability in an airplane. Remember, an airplane moves perpendicular to the axis that it's rotating on. So longitudinal stability is achieved by the proper balancing of the lateral axis. And once again, I like to call this the pitch axis because the airplane pitches up and down along the lateral axis of our aircraft. Now in order for an aircraft manufacturer to get the airplane to be longitudinally stable on that lateral axis, the airplane must balance perfectly on its wing. But this is easier said than done. First of all, at which point on the wing must the aircraft be balanced? A wing is designed so that most of the upper surface creates lift but that lift averages out to one main spot in which that lift is concentrated. This is what we refer to as the center of lift or center of pressure. And your airplane literally balances on this spot as if the aircraft is a basket hanging in the sky from this point. Now the center of gravity is the spot where the average weight is concentrated. So as you can imagine, if we were to place the center of gravity directly beneath the center of lift, everything would be balanced out nicely. But airplane manufacturers don't do that. Instead, they put the center of gravity slightly in front of the center of lift so that the nose of the aircraft is intentionally heavy. And there's actually a really good reason for this. First of all, we do not care if the airplane is balanced when we're sitting on the ground. What we want is for the airplane to be balanced while we're actually flying. Because of that, most airplanes are designed with a horizontal stabilizer on the tail, which actually produces a downforce while the airplane is flying. And the way it does that is by having a slightly negative angle of attack. I like to tell students that it's basically an upside down wing back here. Keep in mind the center of gravity doesn't actually move, but the apparent center of gravity does move. And that's because the tail actually starts pushing down when you start picking up airspeed. And that creates a downforce which balances your airplane out on its center of lift. In fact, did you know that you can actually adjust the amount of tail downforce that your aircraft is producing? So your airplane will be perfectly balanced for the speed that it's flying. Yes, this is what we call trim, and you're going to be using this a lot when you start flying. Every time you change your speed, you should be adjusting the trim so that your airplane is properly balanced, and your apparent center of gravity is aligned with your center of lift. This is going to make it way easier for you to control your aircraft. Now, here's where things start to get really interesting. Once a stable airplane has been properly balanced, it will almost fly itself. In fact, if you understand this concept right now, you're going to be light years ahead of other student pilots when you actually get into the airplane and you start your flight training. Let's say I'm out cruising around and I've balanced out my airplane properly with my trim set to the speed that I'm flying. What will happen if I pitch the nose of my airplane down? 
Well, I'll speed up, won't I? That means my tail back here will create more downforce, and if the tail creates more downforce, then the nose will pitch back up, won't it? And when that happens, if my aircraft is trimmed properly, these oscillations will get smaller and smaller until I'm back to flying at a level attitude. And once again, this is called positive dynamic stability. So always keep your airplane trimmed up. That trim improves your dynamic stability on the pitch axis. As you can see, the two things that affect our longitudinal stability are the center of gravity and the downforce created by the tail. We'll be talking about that more in the next lesson on controllability, but it's really important to know that longitudinal stability depends on these two things. Next, we have lateral stability, and lateral stability occurs along the longitudinal axis of an aircraft. Keep in mind, there are a few different ways that airplane manufacturers achieve lateral stability when they design an airplane. But in this video, I'm only going to explain the two most common designs that you're going to run into during your training, dihedral and the kill effect. Some airplanes are designed so that the outer tip of the wing is higher than the wing root. This is what we call dihedral, and this design is usually a little more pronounced on low wing airplanes that can't take advantage of the kill effect. Let's say your airplane rolls to the left because of some turbulence that pushed up your right wing. When this happens, the wing is not lifted straight up. Instead, it's lifted in the direction of the turn. Because of this, an airplane will typically side slip into a yaw away from the direction of the roll. This is one of the things that causes adverse yaw. Now we talked a little bit about this in our lesson on spins, but in that video, I told you that the aileron that is lowered increases the drag on that raised wing. But that's not the only thing that causes your airplane to yaw away from the turn. The other thing is the horizontal component of lift which we'll be talking about more in an upcoming video. But once again, when that wing gets picked up, this causes the wing to yaw away from the turn. If an airplane's wings were perfectly straight and you rolled the aircraft, the airplane would continue to roll past where you wanted it to go, even after you move the yoke back to a neutral position. This is what happens in an airplane with negative static stability. There's nothing to keep the airplane stable and move it back to its equilibrium. But in addition to that, the airplane would yaw away from the direction of the turn because of adverse yaw and it would just stay in a slip throughout the turn. But in most airplanes, especially low wings, they typically have a dihedral built into the wings. And this causes the wing in front or the leading wing to be at a higher angle of attack because of that extra angle in the wing design. Because of this extra angle, this leading wing is at a higher angle of attack, which means it will create more lift and drag, which rolls us back to level flight. I know this can be kind of confusing since this lower wing is at a higher angle of attack, but this is made possible because of the wing shape and that dihedral angle. An airplane without that dihedral would not want to move back to its original roll attitude unless there was something else that caused it to do that. That's positive static stability. Dihedral gives an airplane that initial tendency to move back into position, and that dihedral angle is carefully chosen so that if something causes your wing to roll, it's going to roll back, and those oscillations are going to get smaller and smaller until they're completely gone, and that's what we call positive dynamic stability. The next design feature that can improve an airplane's lateral stability is something called the kill effect. This is something that's only present in high-wing aircraft, and the way the kill effect works is very similar to the pendulum of an old clock. What, you don't know what that is? Oh, well, in that case, let's say you tied your cell phone on a string and swung it upward. What would happen to your phone? Yeah, it'd move back, wouldn't it? And the same thing happens in a high-wing aircraft. Remember, an airplane balances on its center of lift, and when you look at an airplane from the front like this, the center of lift is actually concentrated up here in the center of your wings. Unless, of course, you're stupid and you put way too much weight in one of the wings or something. That can happen, by the way, especially in bigger airplanes with lots of fuel. Anyway, the center of lift is up here, and the airplane's center of gravity is somewhere down here. And once again, the airplane balances on its center of lift. So if we roll the aircraft, the weight is shifted up. But what goes up must come down, and that means that this weight will try to bring the airplane back to level flight. And this tendency to go back to level flight is something known as the kill effect. All right, last but not least, we need to talk about directional stability. And directional stability mainly affects the aircraft's yaw axis. Once again, we want our training aircraft to be stable. So airplane manufacturers design these aircraft so that they'll have good directional stability. And they do this by installing a vertical stabilizer of some kind or some fins on the back of your aircraft. This in turn causes something called the weather vane effect. Anytime the vertical stabilizer is not aligned with the relative wind, the relative wind will push the tail back into position. A lot like a weather vane. It's a really simple concept, but it works really, really well to achieve vertical stability along the yaw axis. 
Now, you might be asking yourself, why should I care about all this stuff? In fact, I can guarantee you that some of your flight instructors are going to tell you guys that this is something you need to know for the written exam, but then you can just throw it out the window once you start your flight training. Do not do that. If your flight instructor tells you this, tell him that Josh says he's retarded. This is something that will really help you to understand how to control the airplane. And that's because new pilots tend to over-control the aircraft when they're first getting started. This is because they don't understand that anytime you move the controls, a stable airplane is going to try to move back to its original position. And if you know that, you'll be ready for it and adjust your controls accordingly. In fact, if you watch an experienced pilot control an airplane, you'll notice that anytime they move the controls, they typically move them in the opposite direction soon after to keep the aircraft oscillations to a minimum. But for most folks getting started, they wait until the stability of the aircraft moves them to the other side of the control input, and then they use the controls to get the aircraft back into position. But had they just taken their hands off the controls, these oscillations would have just got smaller and smaller because the training aircraft has great dynamic stability. And when you over control an airplane like this, this is what we call a pilot induced oscillation. Pilot induced oscillations are almost always caused by a poor understanding of aircraft stability. That's why you can tell your instructor that he's a dingleberry with love. Do it with love. Hey, I wanna thank you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to smash that like button for me. And then also don't forget to check out my $50 premium private pilot ground course. That's over on freepilottraining.net. And then once you do that, you can check out the next video right here and I'll see you guys over there. See ya.